quality of your life is directly related to the quality of the relationships in your life. Powerful words and the communication in your life is key to thriving and healthy relationships. So joining us all the way from London, Ontario is relationship expert and coach Erica Botha. Erica, thank you and welcome to the show. It's so wonderful to have you. I'm so excited about the show. Do Lorna. So let's get into it. I'm excited. Absolutely. So Erica, communication and relationship coach. Uh, how did you get into that? Because you actually have a finance is it a degree and a finance history but now I mean you are just making waves with your coaching especially in Canada so tell us how that happened yes I'm full-time now in relationship coaching helping couples to have this joyful marriages um now I have to figure out dates dates 20 years ago uh, my husband and I we went through a real crisis trauma and um our, our relationship just fall apart we went to a marriage seminar and he gave his heart to God. And from there on, we had just started working on our marriage, become part of a group that helped couples to have thriving marriages. Mm -hmm. And four years ago, I decided to start doing this full time. I've always did it the past 20 years, retreats, uh, coaching, everything on the side. But now it's full time and it's my passion. It's something that God had just put on my life and here I am talking to you and sharing communication skills today I believe so <laughs> absolutely and what an incredible uh, profession this is because this is I think the most powerful thing that we can do for our marriages but even if you're not married like even if you're just in relationships work relationships uh, family relationships I mean communication is something we do every day and so Communication. So tell us a little bit more. Let's just break that word down a little bit because communication is not just words that is flowing, right? So explain for us first, what exactly do we, what are we talking about today when we talk about communication? What's in here will come out here. That's as easy as that. Wow. What's in here will come out here. So if you say something negative, to your spouse, your partner, or whoever. We can we can trace this through to work relationships, your kids. What's in here will come out here. So mm. and not necessarily against that person. You can you can feel depressed. You can have a tough day at work. You get home and your partner just get it. You get irritated about a spoon in the sink because you haven't put it in the dishwasher. Yesterday that spoon was find it so so communication is really what's coming from the heart wow and the first point that i start when i started my coaching i said i'm going to teach you two things and the two things is to be kind that's the first thing mm -hmm. and the second thing is to be conscious mm -hmm. be conscious of everything sur surrounding you why do you feel that way why is that teaspoon in the sink irritating you today mm -hmm. so be conscious about that be conscious about how your partner feel and what's his reaction and mm -hmm. yeah so it, it's way more than just words and body That's language right. which which i want to get into but it's way more it's what's in here comes out here yeah and i mean it's so I mean, like I, I love the spoon analogy because in our house a lot of the time it's the the AC, all right, the, <laughs> the yes. temperature, 
If someone yes. sets the AC, like my husband and I have very different degrees of comfort in our house and we will have full blown fights about the temperature of the AC and who's, you know, moving that temperature. And then it won't even stay at the temperature of the AC. Before you know it, it's going back 20 years. <laughs> and we actually started with the temperature of the AC. So like, why does that happen? How does that happen? And how can we improve on that? Because that's a powerful thing. Sometimes we are fighting about a very small issue. It should be a small issue but it ends up bringing out 20 years of stuff with us. What happened in cases like that is like one person that start complaining about the AC, their emotional EQ is a little bit lower at that stage. You're in the angry mode. Now think for yourself, if you're angry because it's the second time today that the AC go to 18 degrees Celsius, and when you dare, all that you can think of is that anger. Nothing else here is working anymore. Mm -hmm. So the other person, before you had made that comment, and we will talk now about how to convey that message a better way, but that person is still on a high EQ level, emotional level. But what happened is that person just come down to this level. So now we have two people that is in an angry mode. Nothing else in the brain is working. Only, only your angry part of your brain is working so and there's beautiful words for that but just to explain it better I just used the plain words but it's now we're both on a low level nobody's thinking anymore so the best thing to do in that case is to say hey stop mm -hmm. time out stop time out so this is just not working and then take a break but here is the key the key is to say, we will revisit this in the next hour or the next two hours. I'll meet you at the dinner table. I'll meet you at the beach and make a specific appointment at that stage to discuss it. Because it can go on for days, Lorna, for days. People can be upset and angry about things. I love I that explanation. I mean, the, you, you, you unpacked so many things now. I mean, this is so powerful because firstly, what I heard you say was that when we fight, we are at a lower level in our brains like we're actually emotionally we are not that intelligent when we're fighting right we are not thinking with our brains so that is a powerful thing right to kind of try and within a fight even though you feel emotional but really dig deep and let's just deal with the actual issue and not keep on bringing the emotion in i mean that is like so powerful and we have to stop the emotion. So mm -hmm. now women have a very powerful emotion. We call mm -hmm. it tears. <laughs> so, and when we, when we shed our tears in front of a guy, they just crumble. Mm -hmm. That, and, and you don't resolve the issue because what they will do is, okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'll, I'll put the AC down. I'll put a spoon in the base. It, it, it's not going to resolve. It's almost like you manipulate the situation, but nothing is actually sorted out. There is no... Right. Wow. So I, my, my advice to women is, at that stage, yes, you are upset. And it's for us very easy to cry. Just go to the bathroom. Cry your cries. Upset your upsets there. Come back an hour later or two hours later. And some people need 15 minutes whatever works for you, but make the appointment and go and sit in and talk about the issue. Now, here is my next advice on that. So if I go in there and I'm this negative Nancy and I go in there, this will anyway not get resolved today. I know what you're going to say. You always do this. It's the attitude, right? That you come with. Wow. Attitude, you know? So, and, and, and did you see my body language? Mm. You're almost setting yourself up for failure here. I mean, we, we come exactly. together, we spending time on, and I love how you mentioned to make an appointment, to literally set a time apart and say, all right, we're going to revisit this issue and let's yes. just get together at this place at this time and we're going to talk about this calmly because that is a key 
to a yeah. better relationship, right? Wow, but then come with a better attitude because you're actually just damaging your own relationship and your own prospects for success on getting through this issue if you come with a bad attitude. Oh, this is so powerful. So what is the other big thing about communication is what's your intention? So mm -hmm. if I get to that appointment, now remember what I'm saying an appointment is that if you and me for today, we had an appointment, what was my focus this morning? I was, okay, get dressed, you know, do my makeup, do my hair, get ready for this, prepare for the meeting. The two of us know we're going to talk about communication. So in my head, that was where my head went this morning. If you have an appointment, and it sounds very formal, but let's call it an appointment. Mm -hmm. You have an appointment in an hour's time. Where will your head go? Your focus will be on, hey, resolving this. And now you have to make the, the decision, change your mind and say, we're going to resolve this. Go there with a positive attitude. So here's the key that I want to say is, what is your intention? What's your intention for any communication in our lives? What's our intention? Today, our intention is to convey a message to the listeners and to the viewers to say, please, this is what you can do with communication, learn about it. So what's your, what's your intention when you go and sit around that table with your husband? You said, my intention can be to upset you. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm upset, so I'm going to be upset and that will upset you. And then we're actually not getting anywhere, right? It's a, it's a downward spiral and, and it, it, there's just no victory in that. Yeah, no victory so powerful. That. Exactly, exactly what you say. Mm -hmm. And it should be, what's my intention? My intention is to resolve this AC or this spoon issue. But it's deeper than that. It's mm -hmm. real deeper than that. So the, the AC and the spoon issue is, hey, you don't respect me. Mm -hmm. You don't hear me. So there's, there's other issues that's way deeper than that. And that's where we have to start listening. Mm -hmm. Really listen to what the other person is feeling. Mm -hmm. And the feeling is, hey, perhaps there were so many examples, not only, and we use now a silly example of the AC, but, you know, um, driving away in the car or making tea and don't don't ask me to make tea for you while I'm making tea. Backseat tea. driving, that's a big thing that I see a lot in couples, right? When someone is driving and the other one will constantly have these little comments of do this don't do that do and people can get really upset in a car <laughs> just because of driving but what is the what what do you actually say by doing that you say hey i don't trust you i don't trust you i don't trust your driving <gasps> wow so so it's that's why i say it's not about the spoon the ac the backseat driving it's about what is the what message do you convey? What's that intent of that message? And and that's important. And that is where you where you start. Okay, what's my message? Now the next thing is now you are taken out the emotions. You you dare. You should be in a positive attitude. If you're not, perhaps just extend it for another half an hour or something like that. Never over a day. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you. Lorna, if you leave me when I'm upset by tomorrow morning. More upset. Men can apparently they can fall asleep. And don't <laughs> no. <laughs> You'll have one of those nights where you're sleeping on the edge of the bed and you're literally not falling off. That's if you don't go out to the couch or go out to your friend's house or something. <laughs> Let's just be real here, the, right? <laughs> I refuse to sleep on the couch. I will irritate him by like <laughs> rolling around. <laughs> and, then, and turn <laughs> good old days we all experienced that before but um so the 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 intent is now i love so much i've lost my <laughs> lost my track of mind here so we're all so similar you know it, it we i mean we just got to be real this is real stuff that most of us are sitting with and the key 
you know, that we're trying to convey today is that if we do not change something about it, nothing is going to change. Our relationships are not going to change. Our success in our lives are not going to change. These are important things, right, that will either give us a happy and fulfilled life or we'll just be constantly miserable and failed relationships and constant anger and pressure from every side. This is powerful stuff. So Erica, at people that, you know, this is, we're, we're discussing small things now, like a spoon or an AC or someone, you know, nagging or driving or leaving their clothes out. But like you said, I mean, these things are a lot deeper than that. Um, so when is it important for a couple to realize that, listen, yeah, we're not getting through this. The hour has now become a day. The day has now become a week and we're fighting about the spoon. But the next thing we know, 20 years of baggage is coming with and everybody's just feeling like they want to give up because there's just no you can't really see that this is going to be resolved right and is that then obviously a very good <laughs> time to go and get some help or is that already too late like when is it too late and when is a good time to get help so there's this amazing thing that god gave us he gave us emotions and he gave us not only positive emotions, he gave us positive and negative emotions. And there's a reason that we have the negative emotions. If you experience negative emotions, it means that something bothers you and you have to do something about it. It's as easy as that. If you experience hurt, sadness, depression, anger, um, rejection. I can go on and on and on and on. I have a whole list of negative emotions that I handle with my clients. But if you experience that, then it means something is wrong. Now, if you're in a conflict situation, I know you are married for a long time. I'm married for a long time. And this is inevitable. You will have it forever. But the way you handle it makes the difference the way i handle my 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 conflict and my communication with my husband now than what i did 20 years ago completely different and that is the key so when you experience a negative emotion and you cannot handle it and convert it into a positive emotion just go and see somebody it's as easy as that i had um clients and oh my gosh it was the most terrible um, session that I ever had. So they, I'm doing, I'm doing online um, counseling. So they were sitting in their car and they tried to get away from the kids sitting in their car. There was this storm going on outside. The Wi-Fi was horrible. I've heard every second word. They heard every second word and I give them advice and try to hear their story and tell them exactly what to do. And after half an hour, 40 minutes, I said to him, listen, I cannot continue. I can hardly hear you. This is not good for both of us. I will continue this session next week. The next week, they're coming back and say, oh, we just did what you said and everything is good. Wow. There's the key, right? To actually change and do the work. Like, I think that, that is so profound because in as simple as that, in as short as half an hour, if you actually go and do the work, it's inevitable that there is going to be change yeah. and positive change, right? Yeah, but people will go out mm -hmm. and they will sit around a dinner table and spend a hundred dollars around the dinner table and don't even talk to each other and sit there with animosity and everything else. Mm -hmm. And but they're not willing to spend a hundred dollars to change the everyday life. Mm -hmm. And at, and you had started off. That is my that's my saying. It's like your quality of life is directly related to the quality of your relationships. It's the truth. That is absolutely the truth. I was speaking to a friend of mine this morning and, and we're training together in, in, in the gym and we were just talking about, you know, when you train and when you, I mean, sometimes it's painful. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I, I got this trainer now in the gym and, and I mean, I'm literally in agony every single day because every day we're training a new muscle <laughs> and every day I'm going back and I'm paying, paying him again for more agony. Um, and, 
and I've been there now for, for five weeks because, you know, when you get above a certain age, you've got to kind of be realistic and say, all right, listen, <laughs> do I want to go downhill or am I going to do something else to improve on, on what I have? Let me take what I have and make the best of it. So now I'm paying someone quite a lot of money for personal training and, uh, and I'm doing a lot of hard work. I'm getting up when I don't feel like it and I'm in agony. But it's been about six weeks now. And let me tell you, I can start seeing some improvement here and there. I don't know if I'm like just fooling myself, but I feel so much better. Um, I mean, in, in the gym, I'm feeling stronger because I'm doing the work, even though it's painful, even though it's expensive, but I am going to see a difference, right? If I continue on this path for like six months or whatever, and it's the same in relationships. It's amazing for me that we get married and we think that we have to do nothing else except have a big ceremony and things will just work. And then it's the stigma like, oh no, I can't get help because then it looks like I'm failing. That is the most stupidest outlook, right? Right. We all get help for our bodies. It's exactly the same. So you have a goal in mind and what your goal ever is to get down, to get built, to lose weight, whatever your goal is. So you go there, you pay money, you're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. very important, and you sacrifice. Mm -hmm. so and you have to move you... through that uncomfort level. I think a lot of people go for therapy, try it once don't do the work, don't see the difference, and then just sit back and say, oh, it didn't work. I went for therapy once, it didn't work. Right. right. It's impossible right. that it won't work if you actually do the work on you, yes. right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, but you have to do that sacrifice because mm -hmm. what you're doing, waking up early in the morning before your day starts, mm -hmm. is to sacrifice. So what is your goal and what are you going to sacrifice to get to that goal? And but decide, I'm going to sacrifice talking nicely, being kind, listen to my wife and my husband. I'm going to do these things. I'm going to work on my emotions. I'm going to look at my thoughts. Is this really thoughts that serve me? The thoughts that I have uh, about my husband and my wife. So our thoughts is so powerful. If I, your thought right now about your gym is I am going to look amazing in six months' time. Whatever that amazing look for you. And I want to say that because whatever amazing look for couples, some couples, it, it looks like this and some couples it looks like that. Nobody is in a box in my, in my viewpoint. So what does that look for you? And what are you willing to sacrifice? I'm willing to look at my thoughts and say, hey, this can look better if I am just not that emotional. If I don't take baggage from my past and bring it in here if i stop using words like you always you never oh my gosh that upsets you mm -hmm. really listen to what your wife and your husband is saying is hey I, i'm screaming out to you when when you work late to to spend time with me but what do we do and this is this is the next tip that i want to give is what do you do when say use this example your, your wife or your, your husband work late. So in my case, you use the husband. He's working late. Mm -hmm. So what is your feeling? Your feeling is you feel rejected. You don't get any attention from him. You're just spending so much hours at work. So what we will do? First of all, do the positive-negative ratio. Okay? So the positive-negative ratio is, Hey, hun, I'm, I cannot thank you more than enough working so hard and providing and bringing money in that's oh. the positive right the next thing you say is what do you feel so look at your own emotions that positive and negative emotions god gave us look at that i i feel a little bit lonely when you work so hard so the next thing is the issue when you work so hard that's the that's the thing right but it's not negative the way i'm saying it right it's just that's the issue. And you're very calm through that, right? Because usually it ends up being, you're always late. You're always working late. Rah, rah, rah. And then the husband will fight back because now he's being attacked. So it'll be, I don't always work late. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Rah. And then 
like nothing is yes. getting resolved. Wow. Yes, yes. yes. And, and then the last thing you do is be redirect, redirect and say to him, what do you want? Mm-hmm. I want you to come home earlier on Wednesday evenings that we can have a good dinner together. Mm-hmm. What would your husband say? First of all, you said, thank you. You expressed that you feel lonely. Mm-hmm. The issue is because he's working so hard and late. And the second thing is, it's not an attack. It's just a fact. And the last thing is, you know, I want you to come home early Wednesday so that we can have dinner together. Who will say no to that? Because the consequence, right? Because I think a lot of, we're, we're generalizing again, but let's say a lot of men might feel like they have to bring in the money and everything is just getting more and more expensive and the kids need soccer boots and they need uh, utensils and things for school and they need, I mean, there's always something that we need, right, financially and that there's just always something. So I think for, in general, there's this, understanding that we have to do more to get more money so we might have to go without one or two things there's that sacrifice again to have that Wednesday evening at home and I think that's important as well for when we're saying the wife it could be the other one other way around but when you are requesting something that to understand that there there might be a sacrifice in order for you to get what you're asking for right Right, mm. right, right. There's always a sacrifice. And that's why I say, what are you willing to sacrifice for your marriage? What are you willing to sacrifice to wake up in the morning early and go to the gym? And that's the sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice perhaps not going out for Friday evenings dinners and just spend that money on, on counseling for a while and fix this up and have this amazing rela- relationship which will result, result in an amazing life. Exactly. And the things, the tools that we learn through this, I mean, this is stuff, I mean, I know because I, my husband and I went for uh, amazing counseling with an incredible couple and, and we've done a lot of work as well, watching different videos, going to see someone whenever we feel like, all right, we need some extra expert help now. Um, I mean, then I can use these tools with my children. So I have been able to teach my children as well when they are having fights among each other, because I have three teenage girls in in the house, and to use these tools and say, all right, guys, let's just sit down and let me hear what is in your heart. Like, because this is the words that are flying around now, but let's just... So, I mean, this is so powerful. As a mom, it's been such a blessing for me to be able to implement it just within my children and now they have skills to go out and have more successful relationships with their husbands and their children and it's we're moving in a positive circle in a more emotional intelligent way forward we're moving forward rather than you know because they're you're only going to move two ways you're either going to go forward or you're going to go backwards um we very seldom stand still i mean we're always moving somewhere right all about the legacy your legacy that you're going to leave behind now Mm -hmm. is probably successful marriages that your kids going to have i love it and the same for us you know it's i hope that works that way pray to god that it works that way that i find the right husbands but the thing is that the example that you show them it's not only for yourself it's for them as well. The example that I show my kids how a loving marriage work, they will just take it and they will do it because they don't know anything else. It's the legacy. Huh? Oh, that's so powerful. So, yeah, thank you, Lorna. I hope this helped people. You are amazing. You are just this powerhouse filled with information i hope that every single person that watched this today will contact you (laughs) but uh, thank you for joining us we will definitely get you back and um, let's leave those legacies for our children thank you for being here well that is it from me lorna grayling and woman power If you would like to know more about getting the communication in your relationships up to a higher standard and having this quality of life, quality of of communication, 
Uh, Erica's details will be on the screen right now. Check the links that will be in the YouTube video as well. We will attach all of her websites. We have a phenomenal list that she gave us with some tools, some powerful tools that you can start implementing already and start seeing the change. So until next week, goodbye.